Hot weather continues for lots of us today with extreme temperatures set to last into next week and the Met Office warnings are in place. I'm joined now by, I love her. Good morning, Brittany Tobin, <laughs> and I love him too. I've grown to love you this week, <laughs> Dr. Ambia. Love you too, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> now, Laura, what can we expect? I know you've been busy really analysing this. And so I think the thing is, first of all, a lot of people just thinking these are just summer temperatures, it's just summer, we should enjoy it. And actually over the next few days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, temperatures will be high 20s low 30s that's manageable that's fine yeah, absolutely Monday Tuesday next week we are looking at 35 degrees as our max temperature <sighs> then 38 degrees on Tuesday and the Met Office have now just upgraded that we could have a 60% chance of breaking our all-time temperature record which wow. is 38.7 degrees <sighs> so we have an amber warning for Saturday, Sunday Monday Tuesday for all of England parts of Wales that's going to be extended today and the problem is that it just means that not just the very young very old and vulnerable people being affected by the heat Everybody, healthy people will be affected. People should be changing their plans. They shouldn't be heading on long car journeys. The roads are going to be blocked. The beaches are going to be full. That means there's more people in the sea, so safety is very dangerous. These extreme temperatures are, you know, they were, these were temperatures we were never set to forecast. There's now even a 10% chance we could get to 40 degrees Celsius, which was meant to be one of my worst case scenarios in climate change by Absolutely, 2050. And yes. This could happen right now. So it's, it's really concerning. And so Monday's, Tuesday's temperatures aren't just regular. These are extreme, and that's why the warnings are in place. And, and there can be quite a lot of health damage, obviously, done with that. But could you guide us through the various stages of the effects of heat? Because there are three main ones. There are. It. So the longer people are exposed to heat, the yeah. more likely they are to suffer from heat-related illnesses. So the first one is heat stress. And that's when you might get a bit irritable, a bit tired, and then you should go inside and drink water, really, and keep yourself cool. Yeah. And then there's heat exhaustion, and that's when the headaches start to kick in. And you can get dizzy as blood diverts away from vital organs to your skin and to your legs to try and keep you cool uh, and you start to feel unwell when it comes to heat exhaustion and again get inside keep cool would you feel a little bit sick you could that that usually means you're moving on to the next ah, phase which okay. is heat stroke and that is really really dangerous you can become confused very dizzy your skin becomes dry really hot your core body temperature has risen to 40 degrees and that means that bodily functions just can't go on as normal they they're not used to those kind of temperatures that's a hospital that's a hospital thing if you think someone is suffering from heat stroke they're confused they're, they're not talking they're not responding they may all go on to have a seizure get them inside get them cool get them to drink water if they can if not strip them down and cold water really cool them down yeah. as quickly as you can call 999 if they do have a seizure put them in the recovery position call 999 really really important and you know, obviously during the COVID times, we, we, we came to accept there were vulnerable people uh, for different reasons. But who would we... I would imagine children and the elderly at, the, at both ends. Yeah, well, as Laura was saying, we're all at risk with these temperatures, particularly at the start of next yeah. week. But most vulnerable, elderly people, because their nervous system is slightly impaired, they don't regulate their temperature as well. They don't oh, sweat okay. as much. They might not be able to control their heart rate and blood pressure as well as younger people. They might be on medication that stops them from controlling their heart rate and blood pressure too. They often suffer from kidney damage so they can't pee out as much uh, and also their thirst uh, sense is, is impaired as well so they may not get as thirsty as, as younger people do. I'm looking at us here when I say younger people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> yeah, looking at you, Carol. But children as well, children's sweating response isn't yet developed. So again, with older and younger people, children, don't wait for them to ask for a drink. Give them regular fluids. Encourage them to sip drinks. Find out which, which kind of drinks these elderly people do like and get them to drink regularly. Don't wait. Well, that's one of the key things because often we hear, Laura, don't we, that it's like, oh, if you're dehydrated, water's the starting point, but mm. you need one of these balanced electrolyte balancing things. Is that yeah. a system? So if you're sweating a lot, you will lose a lot of your salts as well, yeah. and that can um, cause electrolyte imbalances. Water is good. You know, water is the best way to, to hydrate, but okay. juices are fine as well. Tea and coffee, people worry sometimes well, about yes, coffee. Well, yes, because yeah. you go caffeine. Oh, mm. I've got the caffeine. Here. Yes, yes. And, and people is worry about the... Well, they worry about the, the diuretic uh, effect of caffeine and making yeah. you pee, or it might affect your heart rate you do have to drink a lot of coffee for that to happen but actually the fluid content in tea and coffee will hydrate you so that's okay it's alcohol that you need to avoid that's the one drink that will dehydrate you've suddenly you. made yourself popular <laughs> i know sorry guys in moderation have a glass of water in between your glasses of wine yes. <laughs> yeah i once went to a restaurant and they would give you booze you know and then they go here's a glass of water 
the water is your friend for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, yes. It's true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> right. What about travelling? Because you said avoid, Laura, didn't you? Because of the queues. The roads but will what... be chock a block with people heading to the seaside. Yes. And, yes. You know, and then you're going to be stuck in the car for so long. Yes. Yeah. So advice. So that. most modern cars will have AC, so you can control the temperature. Make sure you take lots of fluids. Prepare for toilet breaks as well. While you're at the at the loo going for a pee, check the colour of your urine. If it's very dark, you're dehydrated. You want it to be as clear as water, really. So your if urine. it is dark, seriously, you you then know that you need more water. You need more okay. water. Uh, and also, one thing we worry about, and Laura talks about this all the time, is air pollution. Mm -hmm. And when you're on busy roads, there's lots of air pollution around. That can trigger things off like asthma attacks if you've got bronchitis. Yeah. Make sure you take your inhalers with you. OK. And keep the windows closed if you in can. that yes. circumstance. OK. Now... It's been reported, and they handed me this plate, <laughs> that I should sleep with an onion tonight. Yep. I yep. don't know whether it's a personal message <laughs> or what it is. Well, we were trying to tell you something, <laughs> Carol. <laughs> no, well, there's, there's all sorts of stuff now in the news about onions trying keeping you cool during this hot weather. It's not really what? true. Do yeah. you, what do you do with them? <laughs> know, You're exactly. supposed to rub onion juice on your skin or just rub those rub onions along your skin. on your skin. The idea is they, they contain an, a natural antihistamine called quercetin. So if you've got a heat oh, rash because of, because of the, the heat, the quercetin, the antihistamine effect of that will help settle that heat rash. But you will end up smelling <laughs> and it's a passion killer. So my advice is just take an antihistamine and keep yourself My husband's cool. going to throw onions at me now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carol, will you be using onions this weekend? What are you doing this weekend? Oh, well, I am going to the world's biggest military air show which takes place at RAF Fairford. It's called the Royal International I love it, Air yeah. Tattoo. We've got 1,000 Air Cadets. I'm ambassador for Air Cadets uh, there, and they're all working hard. So they're in uniform. Oh, look at me. Look, posh me. Oh, look at oh, um, wow. And, uh, yeah, so a lot of people will be in there, as they call them, the number ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that will Very be uncomfortable yeah. for them. But, yeah. Um, Leave anyway, the onions at home. Then. I should be <laughs> screaming at the aircraft yes. and not covering myself in onion juice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Give my love to Mama Khan. Oh, gosh, yes. And, uh, and to the family. Enjoy. Thank you both. Thank you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.